Okay, I will start now. So welcome again to the second webinar on public interest AI. I'm Theresa Züger. I'm the lead of the AI in Society Lab, which is a part of the Humboldt Institute for Internet and Society since um, 2020. So now running for something like three years. And uh, what I would like to do today in this uh, short webinar is uh, to give you an impression who we are, what we do, why we do it. <laughs> and I will kind of run, run you through the process of our research and tell you what ideas we started with and what kind of obstacles and questions we encountered and so how we, how we decided to deal with it. Uh, and that means that I will touch upon the definition of public interest and public interest AI. I will speak a little bit about data on the issue and also about the ecosystem around public interest AI. And I assume that you are all in some way part of this ecosystem and that this is maybe why you're here. And I will also speak a little bit about our future goals. And uh, since uh, in this webinar, uh, it's a short hour that we have, we won't have the chance to get to know each other and introduce each other to ourselves. So uh, if you would like to have more conversations, more contact, please reach out to me later. Um, yeah, but I will try to speak something like half an hour, maybe a little bit more, uh, and then we can just get into a conversation and you're uh, invited to also tell us about your research uh, in your question uh, when you want to, to speak, um, if you want to. Um, yeah, but other than that, definitely reach out if you see any uh, good chances for a collaboration or a connection. Yes, um, so who we are and what we do. Um, so this is the little research group. We are funded by the um, BMBF, uh, the Ministry for Science and Education in Germany. Um, and uh, we are a very interdisciplinary group. So I have a background in media studies and political theory, while my, the postdoc, Hadi Oshkari, uh, has a background in computer science and public policy. He very much also uh, researched uh, cybersecurity for a long time. And we have three PhDs in the project, um, Sami Neno and uh, Freya Hewitt. Uh, one is a data scientist and philosopher. Uh, Freya is a computer linguist. Um, and uh, they're both doing projects related to natural language processing. I will introduce that in a second. And uh, Judith is doing a different type of project. She has a background in design and communication studies and researches design patterns for pluralistic uh, data governance. So the question, if more than, uh, if many stakeholders have a share in data, how can you find solutions and patterns, how you govern, govern those, um, yeah, the, the data sets well. And uh, overall, we started uh, with the goal to set a theoretical frame for what is public interest AI. And coming from the background of political theory, uh, yeah, I wanted to ground this whole debate into, uh, yeah, with the theories about public interest that exist for a long time in the philosophical debate already. And uh, at the same time, we wanted to very practically kind of build a bridge to what does that mean for building AI. So we wanted to look at the process and the governance process of developing AI and governing uh, AI systems. And that's why we also have prototypes that we develop ourselves uh, and kind of learn while we're doing it what problems you may encounter and try to uh, yeah, include that also in our research and in our learning. So these are uh, a few of the milestones that we have achieved so far. Um, yeah, we have one focus which is coming from Freya's PhD on simple language and the translation from standard German to simple language versions of German, uh, which is an NLP project. And one paper we wrote together uh, under Hardy's lead was to look at uh, yeah, the landscape of simple language on the web. And we built a classifier and uh, yeah, kind of uh, looked at pretty much uh, the whole web as, as, as well as you can to understand where simple language occurs. 
uh, since there is a EU directive that um, specifically public service websites need to have a simple language version and we wanted to understand how they actually realize that and if uh, actually it is used <laughs> by people uh, and if, it, if it's helpful also. Uh, so we wrote a paper uh, on that and were able to present that um, at the ACM Web Science Conference last uh, this year. And also from that project, we developed a prototype. And this is something very important for us that from whichever research we do, something comes out that is useful for citizens and it kind of tackles a real life problem. Uh, and it's not only like, um, yeah, research, but uh, builds something that uh, is definitely helpful to citizens. Um, and we, yeah, built the Simba Text Assistant tool which is a browser plugin. And in the version that you can download right now in the Firefox store, um, you get a um, simplification of a text in the way that you get highlights in any given website. You also get a summarization, um, an extractive summarization of the text. Um, but it doesn't work uh, as well as we wished it would. So we decided to go a little bit on a different path and build something for the group of language learners with the Simba Text Assistant um, tool. Um, and we will kind of change um, what the tool does and produce a simpler version of a German standard text uh, and explain words that are complicated. And this is then supposed to be helpful for people uh, who are um, not in the beginning, but in the process of language learning, which benefit from a simpler text version. And uh, this project is particularly interesting because when we started, we kind of had this idea in mind to have to produce something that is really giving out simple text or uh, yeah, simple German. Uh, but there is a lot of competition in this field. So uh, we reached out to many competitors actually we wanted to collaborate but that was also interesting that when you come with a public interest project that also could have a business case people don't necessarily want to collaborate um, and <laughs> yeah but uh, that's yeah also learning that uh, depending on where you would like to produce something um, others might have uh, the intention to have a commercial product uh, the last project um, is aiming to assist fact checkers. It's also a natural language processing project. Sami Nano is doing this project and it's about um, claim detection. So we're trying to automate the step of understanding which claims are check worthy for fact checkers. And um, he's collaborating there with different teams of fact checkers to also produce something that is really helpful for them. Um, and very applied and there was an interesting study that actually said fact checkers uh, would want a tool that helps them to determine which claims in the first place are check worthy because right now they're pretty much scrolling through telegram groups to find which claims they would want to check um, yeah and with the masses of information that is definitely a problem that they have a hard time going through everything that might be check worthy um, yes, um, but coming from the who we are and what we do part um, to uh, what do we understand public interest to be? And of course, that is something that we kind of started with. We wrote a paper uh, which was published in uh, the AI and Society Journal um, about this idea that we want to go back to public interest theories and um, I think this is a very important move because the public interest concept has been around for hundreds of years and also it's very well connected and kind of tested in democracies and also in the legal system. So there have been many yeah, lawsuits and other <clears throat> legal processes, even constitutions, where uh, legal philosophy has been speaking about the public interest and what it is and actually it has been negotiating in a society, in cases, uh, what might be in a, the public interest in a specific case. And so digging into that research, we found that um, the book by Barry Bozeman was very helpful on the public interest. He's going back to the theories of Dewey, um, who had a very pragmatic approach to democracy. 
And um, Barry Bozeman there um, explains that for him, a working definition of the public interest is uh, those outcomes best serving the long run survival and well being of a social collective construed as a public. And he made it very clear, uh, like going back to Dewey, that for him, um, that is an idealistic and at the same time pragmatic and procedural understanding of the public interest because there is a shared ideal, even though it's not very uh, substantial, but the main part of the public interest is really construed by the process of deliberation of people. So there needs to be this process of a dispute and yeah, the communication about shared interests. And this negotiation, this process then only defines what a public interest in a specific case is. So it is never universal. It always needs to be negotiated amongst citizens. And it's never uh, coming from the private interests of people, um, but really when they step out as citizens speaking about their shared interests in a democracy, that's when they start about, about talking about the public interests. And equality, uh, especially we, we, we uh, kind of experienced uh, or uh, learned in the theories of Feintag, um, who looked at the legal theories of public interest and the legal cases, and he kind of discovered that this value of equality is kind of the baseline, the core value that is very important to public interest theory. Uh, and um, yeah, so we also included that in our thinking um, to what public interest um, AI might mean then. Um, and I will speak about that also in a moment. But coming from that theory, um, we then uh, were asked to do a more empirical study uh, and help uh, a network that is building um, um, based on the initiatives of three ministries in Germany who got together and wanted to build the civic coding network, uh, which is now also existing since the beginning of this year. It's an office in Germany which is supposed to help public interest AI projects. And they wanted us to do a background research report asking what are the actual needs and what actually is public interest AI? Uh, what do these projects uh, encounter? What problems and challenges do they have? What makes them successful? Um, and what perceived risks are there for these projects or perceived potentials also? And yeah, you can find the study only in German, sadly. There is also a shorter policy paper that we published along with it, where we also give some recommendations. Um, and in the study, we talked to um, 20 experts in the field and did 10 case studies. Those are the case studies that we looked at, um, all very different um, in the field. Um, and uh, yeah, I can maybe just uh, introduce you to three different projects that we looked at in those case studies. One uh, is uh, quantified trees. That's uh, a project by the City Lab Berlin, and it's connected to a very uh, down-to-earth, uh, uh, in the in the truth, true sense of the words, um, project, uh, which is called Gieß den Kiez. So water your uh, area, um, and it's about uh, watering the trees around the city, which in the summer, um, yeah, due to also climate change uh, and due to hot weather um, and little uh, green in Berlin at some places might not get enough water. And uh, Quantified Trees then uses the data of the trees to predict which tree might need most watering. And they can actually uh, give an alert to citizens that trees need more water because uh, there is knowledge about which type of tree it is, which position it has, how the weather has been. Um, so um, there might be a good um, prediction to which trees might need water the next moments, next days. Another really interesting tr project where we learned a lot is Common Voice. You might know their project. It's from the Mozilla Foundation. And it's um, a language model data set um, in many, many languages of the world um, where uh, there has been pretty much no or very little speech data avail available to actually build tools upon uh, the data. 
and it, it, it works by donation. So people donate their voices and read particular um, sentences and by that donate uh, that material, that data to the data set and make it possible for technologies to build on that. And as far as I know, it's the second biggest data set on speech um, data available. And for us, it was particularly interesting to look at that how, how that data is governed, how uh, they actually build boards and collaborated with speech communities um, to not go against their wishes, but with those communities to build this um, data set. And maybe another interesting uh, project is iCaptain, which is a technology that um, allows people to um, navigate apps with their eye movement. Um, so every app, it's an open source um, project, and every app can include that code. So the app is then, um, yeah, it's possible to navigate it with eye movement instead of finger movements. Yes, um, but overall, <laughs> we in our research encountered the problem that uh, you hear about AI for social good projects all the time. It's a buzzword these days. But um, beside the problem that I kind of already touched upon, that there is uh, in the discourse sometimes very little definition of what the good is or the public interest, and we kind of need to speak about that <laughs> from a theoretical point of view. There is also not a very good uh, data set on what these projects actually do and uh, who's funding them and what team is working on them, what technologies they actually use and so many other questions that we asked ourselves about these projects and usually you get only a very superficial uh, documentation of these cases. So we started researching and we kind of researched a big data set ourselves of cases that we felt somehow belong to this uh, range of potential projects. But we also wanted to ask projects themselves to maybe uh, yeah, contribute to more data and a better uh, knowledge background on what public interest uh, projects actually define themselves to be, how they understand public interest, since it is never universal and never defined from one perspective. Uh, we believe that this might be very important, that they bring to the table how they understand it and what they actually do. And also it is interesting that many of those projects run for a specific time and then cease to exist, which is also a problem that we uh, learned much about in our civic coding study, because the reusability of technology is not yet um, yeah, very good. Uh, projects are not well documented, they're not well um, available uh, in, uh, for instance, GitHub. And so it's very hard for other projects to actually find out which project existed, even if they are connected, and who was responsible, and how to maybe build on an existing technology. But there is, we called it a graveyard of uh, AI projects. Um, yeah, because they're often uh, only funded for two years or something like that, and after the funding period, you can't find anything about them. And so, also we wanted to learn, like, uh, yeah, how long projects actually exist, how long they run, and uh, how long we can find them. And that's why we initiated uh, publicinterest.ai, uh, which we see as an interface also for the community, talking and thinking about public interest AI, and we try to offer uh, certain yeah, tools for mapping and also sharing knowledge on public interest AI. Uh, and also, yeah, we are hosting a map um, there, which uh, gives people the opportunity to uh, do the survey that I was talking about. So I will go to the map shortly. Um, where you can add your project. And this is the moment where I definitely encourage you, if you have a project in this area, please fill out the survey. Um, this data will also be uh, open to um, others. Um, everything that people fill out in their profile right now, it's 30 projects who did that already, um, will be available in a profile. Um, you, if you go on the website and click on one of these dots, you see that there is a 
uh, quite extensive profile then, which is available. But also we will share the data set as, yeah, if, if it's a little bit bigger, we're still hoping for more contributions with other researchers um, on the GESIS network, which is a, a social science data sharing uh, network. Um, yeah, and or if you know people in this field, it will be definitely helpful if you send the survey to them and ask them to fill it out uh, to uh, make it possible to also have a better visibility for these projects, also have exchanged among, amongst the projects, but also better research on what actually public interest projects do and uh, how they work. Um, yes, another thing that we uh, started here and which is hopefully also helpful is um, the stakeholder index. So um, we not only collected projects that are in the field of public interest AI, but also stakeholders. Um, and yeah, we felt that this, is, this might also be helpful to understand which stakeholders are funding public interest AI, which um, are interested from a political um, perspective, which think tanks work on this and which research institutes work on this. And this is an open list. So if somebody is missing, <laughs> then please uh, send it to us. And we're happy to include more people uh, globally also. We are also expanding our research on that while we go, but we're also happy to just receive um, recommendations. Um, because this is supposed to be really helpful for also those people researching in this field to understand who else is part of the ecosystem. Um, yeah, and uh, maybe one other thing that I can mention is uh, something that is not yet very visible on the website, but we started a fellowship for public interest AI. Um, because we realized that there um, is a problem on both sides <laughs> that we are connected with. Once the academic ex institutions um, have students who want to have practical experiences and mainly they go into industry. Um, and we wanted to give an alternative to the um, playing field. Um, and on the other side, NGOs uh, working with AI and data science have a hard time finding new talents. Um, and so we thought, okay, why don't we make the connection? And that's what we're starting to do. Right now we have a pilot um, with three organizations, with Amnesty International, the Forensic Architecture, and um, with the Anti-Corruption Data Lab. Um, uh, and they each um, will have one to two fellows, uh, which are data science and computer science students from Berlin or from Cologne right now. Also, if you have a, a computer science um, department and you would like your students to uh, take part in this program, also maybe reach out to me, because we are hoping to expand this and create a network of exchange and also uh, create a better exchange amongst those NGOs, which actually are all now exploring data science and computer science, and <laughs> all said, oh, it would be lovely to also exchange with other organizations, how they do it. Um, yeah, but, uh, oops. Sorry. There we are again. No. Yeah, we're, we're every time trying a different glitch, just for entertainment. Um, yes, okay, but uh, this is pretty much the uh, public interest AI website, but uh, maybe another important part of it that I should speak about is, if you scroll down a little bit, um, we see this also as a discussion space. As I said, there needs to be deliberation about what public interest is, and, um, from our research, we um, yeah, tried to explain which ideas we developed, what public interest AI should look like, what it needs to be aware of. And we speak about six um, criteria that we think are important as part of this discussion, um, which are the justification. Um, so it's the question why a team is thinking it needs to do something in the public interest by using AI. <laughs> so why this technology? If it's in the public interest, there needs to be some kind of 
conversation and the possibility of others to argue with that. So there needs to be something like a public justification, which could also mean there is a website explaining what the project does and wants to achieve uh, to give people a chance to actually contest it or uh, agree with it and help it. Um, yeah, the, the next point comes from this strong value of equality and is arguing that equity for public interest AI systems is really a core value. And by that we mean that at the least systems should not discriminate or hurt equity, but in fact that should, they should actually somehow um, strengthen equity. So um, that's also what our idea, for instance, with the um, simple language tools is that we try to give, uh, to strengthen the rights of people who uh, yeah, are language learners might need um, this additional accessibility to, to um, participate. Um, the next part is participatory design and deliberation. This might look very differently in every tool and every application, but generally we believe there needs to be a thought process about who is affected by this technology and how can we include those people somehow affected? How can we offer participation and how is it designed to be meaningful? Because it's a real problem that there is user testing at some point, which then doesn't really affect decisions. Uh, and we believe it's definitely something that makes technology development harder and more complicated. And we also encounter that in our own projects, that this is not easy, but we think it's very necessary and uh, also beneficial to public interest AI projects. Of course, technical standards are an important point. So safety of systems, but also robustness. So does the system actually have the accuracy that we want? And uh, if not, is maybe a, a more easy technology, more robust to give us a better result? And uh, that also comes along with this idea for openness, for validation and scrutiny. So um, in some cases, it might be that um, the data is not open source. Actually, for um, the training data set for uh, Freya's project with the simple language, it was really hard to find an open source data set because there just is no publicly available data set for the, which is big enough to actually train something in a standard and simple language German. And so we got a data set from uh, APA in Austria, but even though we tried to convince them to make it um, open data, it's not. It's only in a different version uh, open now, but not uh, as well annotated as we uh, hoped it would be. Um, which, yeah, is maybe understandable from their perspective. But for us, it was very important, and that's what we also negotiated, um, that we can at least show what we did and how we trained the model and have enough data um, public to um, yeah, explain what we did and make it open for validation to others. So we will share that on GESIS as well and give a portion of the data and show how we annotated and how we trained the model and try to document that so well that others can actually work with that. And last but not least, sustainability, we believe is very important. And other, others speaking about public interest AI kind of conceptualize that as a non-malicious or a non-harmful technology. But we uh, thought about that and felt that actually that might not be enough for public interest, but rather, um, yeah, it needs not to be only aware of the footprint that AI leaves itself. We can also speak about that later if you're interested in it. Um, but also uh, it needs to work towards a more sustainable world in uh, terms of a social sustainability, but also ecological and economic sustainability, which is a challenge. But we believe that those are the things uh, systems should be mindful of and should work towards. Yes. Um, Yes, and now I'm uh, reaching the moment to speak a little bit about our future uh, goals and what we want to uh, achieve in the next year. So we want to have uh, more discussions and also more sh shared standards 
for public interest AI. We believe that now we see really an ecosystem emerging of people working on this. Also in the US, more and more people are working on the same topics. There is a tradition of people working on public interest technology, and I believe that a lot of things are actually speaking about the same things, uh, even if we're speaking about AI projects or other tech projects. So um, we believe that these conversations need, need to come together and need to also bring up shared standards that people can hold on to if they want to do something along the lines of public interest AI. Um, for that, um, we need to, as an <laughs> ecosystem, become better in openness about speaking about learnings, but also open standards and open data sharing. Um, and also the reusability of systems, uh, of um, yeah, the experiences um, and of data. Um, and yeah, this brings me also to the point that we're always open for exchange. Uh, might it be from very practical projects or other research teams and also for collaboration. We, uh, yeah, that's also how this fellowship happened because we learned that there is specific needs uh, that we can maybe help with. Um, and uh, yeah, also we would really like to improve the ecosystem for public in interest AI in, in any way we can. Uh, right now that sometimes happens in very informal clinics, which we would like to also maybe uh, formalize a little bit better, um, where people come to us who want to do a project along these lines and actually want to have a conversation about it because they are in maybe a uh, early phase of their projects and uh, there are some obstacles ahead and sometimes specifically actors from the civic field want to understand that they have a benefit from working with AI but have a lot of questions and a lot of uncertainties and there is sometimes can be very helpful to uh, yeah just have a conversation about the learnings that we have where they might to want to watch out or where they might to also want to get uh, additional help. Yeah, uh, that's maybe it for now. And I'm very happy to uh, answer any questions that you might have. You can uh, ask them right away and just raise your hand and introduce yourself if you want to. You can also just post them in the chat and uh, my colleague Daniel, who is with me, will then read them to me or point me to them so we can start having a conversation. Thank you so much for your uh, attention. <laughs>